So my guys, I have been playing Blue Archive for quite a while now as well as Princess Connect. For Princess Connect, I think it's actually been a year since I've started playing this game. And then as for Blue Archive, again, I've played a bit of JP and then I am pretty deep now in the global version. And so with that kind of context, today I wanted to compare the two games and give you my thoughts on how they really compare to each other. Because at the end of the day, there are a lot of similarities, but but really, I think there are a lot of differences that both have. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect X Blue Archive video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about both of these fantastic games. And so if you are new to the channel, these are two great gadget games, probably among two of the best in the industry, in my opinion. A lot of auto battling, very much like anime waifus like that. Uh, I don't think I can pat this one. And so I already explained what's going to be happening in this video. So without further ado, uh, with Kiana in the background looking at us, let's get into it. All right, so to kick things off, I want to talk about like kind of the mood, the music, the environmental feels of both of the games. And what I do want to say about both of them is that they are essentially like a very, very light and fluffy, right? Both of them. However, if I was to say like which one has the more darker tones, I think Blue Archive does have the, it's a little bit darker than Princess Connect. I think, I think Princess Connect still remains quite light and fluffy overall in terms of the story. So if I click into this one, like I think there is uh there is quite a lot going on in Blue Archive. That's not to say that Precons is kind of like bad or like it's not really dark or anything. I just think that overall both games are very very light and fluffy, but if you were to choose one that had a little bit more dark elements, it would be Blue Archive. As for the music, I think they are both really banging, although they are quite actually different genres. And speaking of genres, both games are it's it's quite different genres in terms of like the setting as well. So if I like hop into some of the characters you'll be able to see that some of these characters these these characters are all based around like guns and stuff guns everywhere so as you can see over here smg got an sr whatever that is probably mortar over there sr again i suspect that stands for sniper rifle another sniper rifle ar assault rifle and then if i was to come over here and click into some of the characters here you can see it is very much more like fantasy based so as i go through each one you'll see it's like a like a monk and then we've got a, i don't know what that is and then we've got like a sword Swordswoman over here, another swordswoman, and then we got like a, another monk kind of thing, another swordswoman. Okay, there are a lot of sword users here. But as you can see, this is a lot more like fantasy based medieval as opposed to this one, which is very, very modern. On top of that, when you actually enter a stage like these ones, the setting is very much in the city. It's very, very modern. So if we have a quick look at the different enemies that are in Blue Archive, you'll notice, look at that. That's, that's even more modern than where we are today. We've got some like really futuristic tanks as well as like armored people. And then I come over the precon and we're fighting a, a leafy boar as well as a jackal thief. Again, these ones are very much like fantasy monsters. You got high orcs, you got like treants, stuff like that. And so this is pretty interesting because it's more of a personal preference thing. Me personally, I actually enjoy fantasy a lot more than like the sci-fi kind of feel that Blue Archive offers. On top of that, however, like you'll notice that Blue Archive, it's very much 3D. So let me see if I can. So here is the team formation as you can see very very chippy uh, very similar to precon actually but on top of that they actually have like 3d models which is actually kind of cool so you can interact with them quite a fair bit and then speaking of interaction if i head on over to the cafe we can actually like pick them up or like uh tap them on the head I, okay we can't actually do anything with them okay, that's kind of weird but yeah like the art style of this is very much chippy very much 3d on precon it is very much 2d so if i hop over to the guild house you'll see my characters or my single character over here i got my Zumuki and it's nice it's they are completely different styles again in terms of graphics I think both are like top in their class blue archives models are so high quality especially for their 3d little models but their live 2d is fantastic as well on the other hand again I don't even know what's going on here Okay, so I think my character got into that llama suit. Anyway, oh, there she is. Anyway, so as you can see, all of those animations, like the production value in both of these games, uh, it's just insane. In terms of the music, again, I think Blue Archive's music is so banging. It's just like so freaking awesome. Whereas Precons is more like, again, like the fantasy feeling, but like funnily enough, I prefer Blue Archive's music. Me personally, I feel like Blue Archive's music is on the tier of like Dragalia Lost, where 
<laughs> it's just so freaking good. That's not to say that Precons is bad. It's just that like Precons music is fitting. It's very like medieval fantasy sounding. But like then you got like Blue Archive, which is kind of like techno -y or whatever. Or like Indragalia, it's like a whole J-pop album. It's freaking sick. All right, so the next thing I do want to talk about is the UI because it's considerably different. I, I would say that although they are kind of similar, they're kind of like two different generations. When I look at Blue Archives, I think of more like uh, the Punishing Grey Raven or like the Alchemy Stars. It's just really clean and I think what really contributes to it is like the whole blue theme. But on top of that, like the screen is just not overly busy, which is really, really nice. And then I come over to Precon. And to be honest, Precon's UI is, it's still really, really sharp. It's very, very fitting. But Precon's UI certainly feels like it was from like an era ago. Just looking at Blue Archives one, it's just something about the UI design. Uh, it's, it's a great experience. It's very, very pleasant, very, very modern. And speaking of which, Blue Archive tends to run on 60 FPS, whereas Precon usually is on 30 FPS. I used to be able to force Precon to run at 60 FPS and it was so, so good, but it just stopped working. But otherwise it is like, again, down to stylistic choice. I think both UIs are fantastic, very, very cohesive. Like all of these icons, all of these menus, they look like they belong to the same game, right? And then looking at Precon, I really could say the same thing. If I click into quests, all the menus, like it is very, very consistent and I love that. And it's funny that I have to talk about this, right? Because there are a few games where it's kind of like, okay, well you click into something and it kind of doesn't feel like it belongs, right? So Revived Witch is probably one that comes to mind. The UI just feels really cheap. It does not feel very premium like the two of these games. All right, now let's talk a little bit more about like time commitment as well as gameplay. So let me hop into these two over here, which are both the daily menus. I personally think that Blue Archive it's a little bit longer than the pre-con dailies. However, this is under the assumption of like being an end game player in pre-con. I'm just assuming that you're gonna be skipping as much as you can, which Blue Archive has built in natively. Whereas on pre-con, if I wanted to skip a stage, I have to actually be able to use some skip tickets. So if I click in, go these guys over here, I only have, I only have 5.7K. I think in terms of time commitment, Blue Archive kind of has a little bit more variety, just a little bit more. You've just just got a tad bit more interaction, right? Cause you got like the cafe, you got the lessons. And then on top of that, you've got crafting. And then if we hop over here, we've got the PVP and then the bounty commissions and then eventually raids as well. Whereas for Precon, a lot of the time, it's kind of like, oh, select a stage and then we skip it and that's kind of it. We unfortunately don't really get to do much with the guild house over here. So it's not really like much interaction. Like you can build your furniture and stuff, but you can also do that in blue archive. However, on the topic of content, I do want to talk about pvp oh my god pvp is like so the pvp system as you can see they are well, they almost look identical right however i absolutely detest the blue archive pvp i got baited so hard into it i thought i was missing out on so much because i did not have this character over here shun and i kind of am i do think that pvp is very in-depth for blue archive but I also think on top of that, there is a massive, massive layer of RNG. It's like, for example, if I was to fight this guy, Yosuke, and like I fight that comp with a particular comp and then I fight it again, there is a pretty big chance that the outcome could be different because of RNG, like the skill orders or whatever the AI decides to use. Whereas on the other hand, over here, we got Precon. It's like every team comp has a counter and every team comp has like logic behind it. So like, for example, we've got a tank, a tank, a bruiser, another tank and then an AOE attacker. And then with all of these characters, like their skills are predictable and you can form counters around them. If I successfully counter this team in Princess Connect, generally speaking, it's going to work again. That is unless I made like a really, really risky comp and it, like RNG worked. On the other side, I can't expect the same for Blue Archive. Like generally speaking, yes, they should work, but there's just a lot more RNG here. Now, what is nice about Blue Archive's PvP system is that it's like very inconsequential in terms of like gem income. The tiers, the rewards between each of them, like it's okay. So if I go from day, as you can see, the rank one gets 45, 
3 to 10 gets 35. And then if I look at where I am, I'm at 18, which is, you know, it's kind of okay. Whereas on the other hand, we got pre-con, like first is 300 gems and then 250 and then 200. So if I was to put this into perspective with some context, rank one is essentially getting two pulls from just this one over here. So if I looked at rank one on blue archive, that's like one third of a pull. And then the scaling down, like as you can see, it gets like really, really tough, like from 300 down to like uh, 110, 100, and then 40 over here for 300 to 399. So that's like a dramatic decrease. Like it goes down to like 10 times less and stuff like that. Whereas over here, we've got 45, like we're not going to see 4.5 gems, although we are going to see 10 gems for like the lowest tier. I just quite like the fact that like the rewards are kind of compressed for blue archive as opposed to pre-con where it's like, if you don't hit the top ranks, then your gemmy income is kind of going to be suffering. Okay. And so continuing on the vein of content, we've got clan battle for uh, pre-con and then we've got total assault, which is kind of like your raids for blue archive. So your raids, and unfortunately I can't show you anything, I don't think, but your raids in blue archive have a kind of like a solo effort whereas you have a 30 v 30 v 30 and then that probably times like a million times that is for princess connect i think that this kind of point is probably going to be a massive determinator for whether you enjoy uh pre-con more or blue archive more because as i just said clan battle this is going to involve a lot of team coordination whereas the total assault it's all dependent on yourself so if you are more of a solo player you probably would like total assault more although like if you are casual enough you can just find a clan where you can just hit it and like do whatever but yeah that's kind of like the end goal for both of the games like on this side we do have the one on raid the soloing against boss monsters whereas on this one we have the teamwork against boss monsters i actually don't know if there is any guild content for blue archive i don't think there is and i don't think it's actually coming but like to me personally i kind of find it like a breath of fresh air but otherwise again clan battle total assault both have very very different merits all right and so the next thing i do want to talk about is like the combat itself because i i used to think that blue archive was very very much like princess connect when we talk about uh the combat systems themselves so as you can see we've got the blue archives we've got the girls running up and if i do hit the auto mode you know it just does things i guess however the thing about Blue Archive is that there is also the dimension of like being able to aim things, right? So in pre-con, you can't really aim anything. So here is a pre-con battle. And as you can see, like we have the TP bars charging up over here. And then when the blue bar goes full, we are able to activate a skill. However, the placement of these skills are all predetermined. So for example, I think pretty much like all of these characters, uh, this one, she will heal herself or rather she generates a shield to heal herself. Uh, the attacking unit, they will attack the front most and then some of the other characters will attack the ones with like the highest magic attack at the time kind of stuff like that right so as you can see they're all whacking the front most unit they, they are following like very very strict rules however on the other hand we've got blue archive over here and like like i I can actually drop this med pack. So as you can see, it moves one ally to the designated location, then recovers 120% healing as HP. So technically speaking, I could drop it near this character and she would go get it. Or I could drop it like down here and she would go get this health pack. And then, so let me take away this one over here and let me use one of the attacking moves. Like, look at that. You can actually aim this. So I, I want to say that there is probably a lot more agency that you have in terms of Blue Archive's gameplay. I guess what I'm really trying to say is that you can probably make a bigger impact in Blue Archive than you can in Princess Connect. Although like Princess Connect, like manualing those skills, it is still very, very important. But just being able to aim these guys, like I think it definitely adds that next level of dimension to the gameplay. Whether it's good or bad, I think that's up to personal preference. But if I was to say or like rather make a distinction between the gameplay between the two games, I would say that Blue Archive's battle system, it's more involved. That's that's how I would put it. But to be honest, I really like both. Like at this point, I'm not really preferencing one over the other. All right. And so with all of that being said, I do want to move on to the last segment of this video, which is about the premium systems. Like the currency income stuff like that and so let me start off with princess connect so princess connect generally speaking it's been quite generous in terms of jemmies so both games definitely did originate from jp uh as for princess connect i do believe that we have gotten more gems than the japanese server actually and that's really saying something and that is praise for Crunchyroll. Yes, it is praise. They have given us some gemmies, for example, I think it was like Christmas or like Halloween or like hitting some personal milestones.
phones on like app stores or they kind of just felt like it like it's not like they flooded us with a hundred rolls or whatever like when they do so like right now we're getting free 10 rolls they do actually occasionally give us like quite a fair bit of rolls on the other hand we have blue archive i Unfortunately, I did not actually play enough of Blue Archive to know how the JP or how the generosity of the JP server played out. But from just playing since launch, they have seemed to give us like a lot of currency. So if I can find like the notifications. And so as you can see, we have a whole bunch of notifications. We have uh, ranked one in both app stores and we got like 1.2K gems, that's a temple. And then we got another one for like the start of this event and then another 10 pool for whatever reason. I think another one for three mil down downloads and obviously this is the honeymoon period they are doing really really well some games for some reason they just don't honeymoon uh for example punishing gray raven for whatever reason punishing gray raven was really stingy in their honeymoon period again pgr is a fantastic game but like there are some things that can be criticized about it but yeah for both blue archive as well as precon it's honestly really hard to say but i think both are quite generous in terms of their premium currencies now oh man this is a uh, this is actually quite fantastic. So you see over here, recruitment points zero, and then over here, character exchange points 10. So these are our pity systems for the two games. Blue Archive 100% edges out here because they have actually like implemented a quality of life uh, update. And this QOL update on Japan, they decreased the spark amount or the recruitment points, the selection from 300 down to 200. On the other hand, for Precon, it is unfortunately still 300 pulls to be able to spark a character to guarantee or trade in for them. And then one might argue, oh man, like the rates, maybe the rates are gonna be better. So let's actually have a look. So as you can see over here, Precon's one for a three-star character, which is the highest rarity, is at 2.5%. On the other hand, for Blue Archive, we've got uh, over here. So that's one, two, three, four. So I tallied all of the three stars up over here, and it also adds up to 2.5%. And so therefore, the draw rates for the highest rarity characters for both games is actually the same. It's just that Blue Archive has a way better spark system. Me personally, I really wish that Precon got the 200 spark system like uh, in the next few months, but that probably is not gonna happen because Crunchyroll has been publishing like very, very sequentially. Whereas on the other side on Blue Archive, like the devs, I think the devs are actually actively working on bringing like the newest QOLs over and all of that. And so in terms of development effort, I do think that Blue Archive also does have the edge. I actually think Crunchyroll does does not develop anything at all here. For Precon, I think all they've done is kind of like taken a one-to-one -one copy, a JP, and then made it English, and that's kind of it. And then like every two weeks, they go and pick up a patch, translate it, and then put it in pick up a patch, translate it, and put it back in again. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Especially if they're not nerfing anything or like changing anything for the worse. It's just that when I compare it to like the development efforts of Blue Archive, it pales a little bit. All right, I think that's it. Oh man, that was, um, that was a very, very long video, but hopefully you guys kind of found that comprehensive and kind of entertaining. And so with that being said, I do want to pass on the question to you guys. Do you guys play both Precon and Blue Archive or one or the other? And have you ever compared these two games together? Did I make like a fair comparison? Or do you just think like one is straight up better than the other? Whichever one it is, I would really appreciate it if you would leave your thoughts down in the comments below because it means that you've watched up until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did like this video, then please, you know, like this video. And if you would like to see more, then please subscribe as well. But otherwise, as a Shiroko once said, oh my God, look at that. She once said this, like true story, but all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.